Hello, and thank you for joining us for our pre-recorded lunch break with Pastor. This is uh, for September the 2nd, Associate Pastor Tony Gandula with my father's house. Um, thank you for joining us. Hit the Shop Now button on Facebook to go to the Donate Now at MFHLB.com. We're talking about continuing to talk about and minister the love of God. I want to continue with 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. Now, as we read these scriptures, we're going to read them in order. There's actually an, another awesome scripture that's number, um, actually it's number 3 through 5 we're going to read. Number 6 is, if we can, if we can sneak it in there, we're going to, going to go ahead and do so. But I want to read these in order. We're going to talk about knowing how to really know um, and to really know someone, according to the Word of God, is to have love for them. Um, that's a word that is uh, very powerful because with love, all things are possible. How do I know that? Because with God, all things are possible and God is love. So let's read 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 through 6. We're going to put all three through five. I guess I'm going to go to six, huh? We're going to read all of these together. How do we know? Hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith, this is King James, so he that says, I know him and keeps not his commandments, I know him. To really know someone is to love them. I love that person, then I would keep what they love. Right? All the commandments are summed up in, in um, loving the Lord your God and loving your neighbor as yourself. If I am going to do things such as not harm or steal or um, covet, you know, um, manipulate, then I'd have to actually love what my neighbor, how he loves what he loves or she loves. Let me say it. I want to say it the easy way. Love what my neighbor loves. Have the same value. They put swords towards something. It's valuable to them. I'm going to respect that. I'm going to keep it like, like they value something. Let's get back to the word. He that says, I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Now, right there, a lot of us are going to be like, oh, that's everybody, right? Well, yes, right. But there's a change. And let's continue so we hear the verses in context. In context, 1 John 2, 3, hereby we know him. Hereby do we know him. Hereby do we know that we know him, <laughs> if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him, and keeps not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. We keep hearing one word over and over again. But whosoever keeps or keepeth his word in him truly is the love of God perfected, and hereby know we that we are in him. He that says he knows him ought to walk even as he walked. We begin to value the things that belong to God like he values them. We know his nature is inside of us. We know that he's alive and bigger than us. You know, the Bible says that greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world because you're really bigger on the inside if Jesus is living inside of you. You're bigger on the inside. In context, and centering on the word keepeth, hereby we do know, 1 John chapter 2, 3 through 6, we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, there's another verse that says, and his commandments are not grievous. It's not a bummer. It's not a drag. It's not grievous to us to keep his commandments because they're precious to us like they're precious to him. Hereby we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he that saith, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But don't let that stumble you. Look to the next verse. But whoever keeps his word in him truly 
is the love of God perfected or the love of God made perfect. That's how we know we're inside of him. We keep his word. Now, that word that keeps repeat, repeating is the word keep. And let's look at this word. The word keep simply means to guard from loss or injury. And it properly means keeping your eye upon. Now, that is saying a whole lot. What do I keep my eyes on? If I keep my eyes on something, then I'm going to go in that direction if I keep my eyes on it. You know that he keeps his eyes upon us. The Bible says that he endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. He had his eye on something. <laughs> he had his eye on the goal, but he had his eye on you. And he had his eye on me. He had his eye on people. He has his eye on mankind. He ever lives, the Bible says, that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for his people. He ever lives to make intercession for them or for us. Now, that's a very major um, verse. And to get into it just a little bit, I'm... I'm I'm wanting to here, but I don't want to get off subject. So I'm going to steer myself back in <laughs> to the word keep. To keep your eye on something means you'll not, now hear this, you'll not fall. You'll not fail. Let me explain it to you real simply. I... I got to uh, talk to a person who uh, rides a motorcycle recently, and we both had the same understanding when it comes to doing something like riding a motorcycle or getting on a surfboard. I learned this paying 70 bucks <laughs> in a surfing lesson on getting on a surfboard. Of course, um, if you're young and agile enough, it's not that difficult to get on a surfboard on the water, but it was a little more difficult for me. and. A motorcycle um, enthusiast who just recently started riding about five years ago um, said the same thing. The instructor, when we got on the board, said, do not look down. <laughs> if you look down, that's where, you'll, where you will go. If you look at where you came from and who you think it is, and this is reality, this is the way, this is the way I am. That's what I'm looking at. And you're looking down, person on a surfboard. That's where you'll go. You have to keep your eyes up. You have to look forward. It keeps your equilibrium. And then you know what to do with your legs. You're on your chest. You put a, a leg underneath you, like one knee. You put one in back of you, and you slowly start to rise from the board from there. And the whole time, you have to keep your eyes ahead. You look down. You look at where you were. And I'm going to make this spiritual on you. You look at the natural. You'll go there. <laughs> you look ahead. You'll ride, you'll ride that wave. And you have to catch the wave at the same time. Same thing with the motorcycle, he said the same thing. You have to look ahead. And everything else has got to follow what you're looking at. You're making your body obey what you choose to look at. You don't pay attention to your body. I'm gonna talk more about this tomorrow because we're running out of our 10 minutes. But that's why, if you keep your eyes, that's what it means to keep. If you keep your eye on it, you won't fail or fall because of where you're looking, where you're heading, what you are concentrating on, what you're guarding from loss or injury. 
where your eyes are, where your focus needs to stay. More on this tomorrow as we talk about the love of God and knowing that we know him. And it's not that complicated. It's just something that our natural inclinations resist. Thank God that coming to Jesus is a supernatural experience. Kiss to the King. We'll wrap it up tomorrow. God bless you.